I'm gonna try. Uh, um, I just want to try finish Orot Hamilchama. Um, we've got the third part of chapter nine, and then just this last part of chapter ten, and then we, and then we have it. Um, just do some words quickly. Um, okay. Uh, then we got up here. So we got, so we so we chapter nine section number three, um, and then we'll see. We're going to fly through it all and uh, and then finish it. I think that'll be a good achievement. And then hopefully, when we finish the Rotsa Milchama, then the Milchama will also be finished in that chutz at least. Okay. Um, can just wrap something quickly. We better hurry. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, okay. Chapter nine, number part three. Okay. Kulat Rabbi Yachiv Ola. Well, let's just see quickly what we saw before. Just talking about how the wars are there to bring out, <clears throat> in a sense, like in a war, in a sense, we know that the war brings out the essence of um, of Am Israel, um, and then it's also a process that the nations have to go through in terms of their own self manifestation and refinement and. It's like this, you know, we were saying just before we started today, like the this whole back and forth and to and fro and like history repeating itself. But it's like the sort of, um, you know, there's like up and down cleansing mechanism that uh, that we go through where, you know, we think we're okay. We think we're out of the out of the woods. We're out of the darkness. We're out of the suffering. And then uh, the world comes again with all its schmutz and, and uh, pollution and, uh, and, and starts throwing it on us again. And uh, you know they do it in the name of nationalism in one hand, the name of anti-Semitism on the other, the name of woke and peace and and and, and liberal values on the other. It's it's all like these other values that then come up and in a way like have to show their true um, their true roots. And then those who are able who are able and authentic and uh, truthful enough to see the light of these things will hopefully you know shed these things. Um, but at the, but but for us it's like this sort of like deep uh, painful scrubbing and cleansing that we have to go through every time and think okay you thought that value was right uh, okay hellenism was was great okay well we better go to war with the greeks to realize how uh, um how untrue that is um and then some people get lost in that and, and we lose them and they get hellenized and undo their their brit mila and do weird things like that um and uh but but the jewish people go through their process and come out and we're able to sing Mao's tour and uh you know reflect on all those different um pieces that we've been through and 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 hopefully our, our own identity in contrast to all those things now becomes more refined that's sort of like a um i would say some sort of unrefined uh summary of, of what we've seen over here but the bottom line is that there's this process of the nations become refining become refined through the through the need for us to be refined um with with us at the center um okay so part three so when this process of uh, renewal happens all the cultures of the world will become renewed and uh, refreshed through that the cultures of the world will become renewed and refreshed through that all the um all the opinions, all the philosophies, will become set straight. Okay? They all think they. Everybody thinks they. You know, you know, you never ask somebody, "Are you thinking straight?" Of course, they think they're thinking straight. There has to be like a very powerful and brutal process in a way to uh, to uh, to show people that their straight is actually skew, <clears throat> and what they thought was skew is actually straight. So, so that has to happen. Um, um, all of life, right? So there's the level of philosophy that needs to become straightened. And then there's all the levels of life. Um, all of life becomes um, enlightened and illuminated with happiness, um, with, a, with, with a new birth of, um, um, of, our, of, our, of, of, an, of our establishment, of establishing this, uh, these reality and these truths. Um, so, from the philosophical aspect of they are of knowledge and uh, and understanding and perspective and philosophy, that's going to become straight. Um, and we should say this as a tefillah as well. All of the aspects of life, of living, 
will become in, uh, enlightened and illuminated in the same way like when you have a new baby right everybody knows like the, the amazing simcha that you have when a new child is born actually that reminds me i want to i want to show you something that i just saw on facebook just remind me this amazing thing on facebook that i just saw um so there's uh so there's that joy of birth and, and of life that happens and that also happens on the active vibrant level of living as a, as a nation as a people amongst people and then all the beliefs everything that we believe has to now wear um, new clothes right you know like when you've gone through this transformation i don't know you lose weight or you uh, uh i don't know change your body shape somehow you go through some sort of shift and change um then you need new clothes right there's nothing like a person who suddenly loses all the weight and then wears the old clothes it's like not my tim it looks weird the clothes look better when the person was in a different shape and size now the clothes look uh, look look uh, inaccurate and it actually reflects worse on the person welcome back ed good to see you again we missed you um so so we have to change our clothes um not only because they don't fit anymore because we've changed our essence but also yes um, they've, they've also become uh, filled with uh size excrement right they become like dirty and soiled just to get rid of all these soiled uh, clothes as well they've been dealing with dirty and disgusting things because that's where this person's been drawn towards and now they also have to be cleaned because of that and they will have to be removed because of that they eat and now they have to wear precious clothing now that the essence is revealed as being precious and beautiful um uh and and and, and upright and glowing so the person has to wear clothes that are that are appropriate yes with Kolpigul. They have to abandon every um, imperfection, every um, uh, Pigul is like, uh, you know, when you go back, you know, from Korbanot, um, when you give a, when you, when you have a, when you give a Korban and you think about a different time, you have the wrong thoughts when you give the right Korban, it's called Pigul, it nullifies the, the Korban. So all these things that, that all our action, how the actions have been divorced from, um, from the correct thoughts, now that now we have to abandon it and throw it away call time a whole to you all the impurities and all the abominations that have grown within within our midst or within their midst the midst of the nations and then we talk to your neck me tell or a college and i'll have to unite in order to um suckle um clean sustenance from uh from from the holy light <coughs> from the heels of the holy light right so now now that they're different they also have to change their diet Okay, they can't keep on eating the same bad foods that they were the same uh, bad uh, emunot and they ought. Um, they have to now, uh, like, and it's also like interesting, it's not le'echol, it's linok, right? So it's like a, it's like a newborn baby, these, these, these nations. They actually have to learn how to, how, to, how to eat again. They're not eating, they're suckling. They have to keep a very close relationship with the, with the giver of the sustenance um, and them as the receiver. Asher hukhnume, as the kol goi, v'chol adami ve'er Yisrael. So what are they feeding from? They're feeding from these like Talay or Kodesh. Asher Hukhnu, they were prepared, my as um all that time ago, the Khol Goy, the Kholadam, River Air Israel. Um that were prepared for every nation and for every uh, individual in the the wellspring of Israel. Right. So so we really should should be uh um you know, when we talk about or like Oyim, it's not just like in the in the level of Dayot, but also in the level of sustenance. Um in the in the in the level of spiritual sustenance and um and torah that then we, we need to be creating foods not just creating you know we're leading the world in creating um power of a meat right and like uh, creating uh organic uh organic based meat and plant-based meat and all these things so we need to have um israel jewish based philosophy that people can now feed themselves on and sustain themselves so that's why um you know making sure that we're thinking and acting and believing correct is now so important because also the nations need to now they need to go back to school um and you know that's that's like the only real thing when we're in the middle of this war what's going to solve it you know killing all these hamasnikim is like uh right like it's like getting rid of the evil clothes uh, and, the, and the soiled clothes but but it's not touching the essence right these people still believe the same crooked things um so so how do you how do you how do you get them to start you know it's a change education system from the beginning and uh, teach them ways of upright uh, humanity and morality um because otherwise the same 
you know the same horrible uh, heads of destruction are going to keep growing from the from the perverted abominable body of all that they are <sighs> Right, so now moving back to these um, original things. So first of all, these are Rota Kodesh, have been waiting there, prepared for them to eat from and to sustain themselves from. Then we cut Abraham, going right back to like the bracha that Abraham, who was called Abraham because he was, Abhamon Goyim. So our role as a nation is not just for Israel, but it's for all of the nations. So that bracha of Abraham, it'll start be able to be manifest its, manifest its actions. Uh, but toketh, um, right, with, with power, over galoi, and in a revealed way, the old Piyasoda, and according to its, its foundations, Yechal Mechadash, not like in like a, uh, a little bit of an Abraham Accord, yeah, and Abraham Accord there, and you know, twist, yeah, and you know, sell half our soul to be able to uh, open up some, you know, gateway for more destruction. But no, these, this big Abraham has to happen, but the teketh of power. Bagaloi in revealed Alpiosoda Yachal and be true to its foundations. So a true Abraham Accord. Um Mechadash from a new uh uh Yachel Mechadesh Binyanain of Eric Israel. Um and from that we'll be able to um restart our building in Eric Israel. Um Hachurbana Akshabi Uhachanat Tia Khadasha Amuka the um the the Ufiat. So the uh, the distraction that we feel now is a preparation for the new for the new renewal, one that is deep and in, uh, and is characteristic. Or not set. This uh, light of the supreme kindness will burst out, will burst forth. Hashem Hashem the, the name of Hashem in being Hashem which is like this. Um, you know, we're coming close to pace. That's Hashem reveals himself to Moshe. They even use it in the Prince of Egypt. I will be what I will be. It's like that that, uh, that moment where, where they even use those words. So, but it's it's all about the future and ongoing revelation of Hashem in the world. Um, that's that's what we're striving for. Have a God and then we bring great, we bring call and bring greatness towards our God. I want to go back to this piece over here and just thinking about um, uh, last Shabbat. Um, we spend Shabbat in in Beit El with uh, with my brother and sister in law, my wife, sister Michal, and her husband Brad. Her husband Brad learned in Beit El for for ten years, and then they went in Shlichut to Perth for eleven years, and they came back about uh, yeah, four months ago. So um, we were with them when we were learning in Kolel and Efrat. They were learning in, in Kolel in in Beit El, and then we sort of like went on Shlichut a year or two apart. They came back a little bit after. Um, and we were there for the second last Shabbat. They were living in a place called the Givat, Givat Upana. There was a place in Beit El that uh, was like a few build, a few blocks of buildings that through these you know crooked legal things, um, the Supreme Court had said they needed to, they needed to do a Pinoy of these places. And it was after, I think it was after Amana um, and after, not Amana, Amana. And after, um, obviously, after Gush Katif, so there was all that you know, tremendous pain. And then the government was fearing moving these people out. It was still going to be like within the same yeshuv, and you know, so they were living in those buildings. They were only renting, but everybody there was like part of it. And obviously, the government was scared of what was going to happen, and there was lots of preparation. I remember seeing um, like strips of like old clothing inside these tires. Like the kids were all getting ready, you know, for who knows what, and. It was, uh, we, so we were there the second last Shabbat before they were they were expelled, and the davening was all done like in the streets, you know, to like to 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 um, to fully express like you know ribonut and things like that. It was very beautiful, um, and then the whole thing happened. You know, I think they went on shlichut just oh no sorry they moved into Karavilot and then the, the whole pinoy happened. Baruch Hashem, like it happened without any you know any harm or whatever it was. Um, but part of the part of that thing was that to say, and my brother-in-law Brad was saying, um, he said that Rav Zalman Melamed, who is very close to the Rosh Hashiva of Yeshivat Beit El, his son is Rav Eliezer Melamed that wrote Pina Halacha. Uh, but Rav Zalman Melamed is a phenomenal, phenomenal Talmud Chacham and like Ragish and uh, just a, a beautiful, beautiful person and soul. Um, so he uh, he said he, he said at the time, and Brad said it to me a few times over Shabbat. Uh, you know, Rav Zalman had like the peace of mind and the emunah to say, wherever there's Khurban, 
there will be binyan. That's what he said. Like whenever there's Qurban, there'll be binyan. You don't have to worry. Uh, there'll be this Qurban, but there'll be greater binyan. And the deal that they've done with the government is to say if you leave peacefully, um, we're gonna build you know huge apartment blocks over here. So we spent Shabbat this last week in one of those huge apartment blocks. Um, and they're huge, it's like in the whole of, like in the Binyamin area, and you know, just after Ariel, and um, like they don't see anything like it. These like high rises, like you can see in Renana. Um, and uh, there's like, I think there are five of them up. There's another one across from the apartment, you can see starting to go up. Um, but it's quite amazing. It, and it's like this whole school now that's built around, a lot of people move from Yerushalayim because it's, you know, because it's cheaper there. Um, and uh, in the middle, there's like this big stone, sort of like a setting stone there. Um, or even you saw it, like you know, establishing stone with Herzog, you know. So it's like in the heart of uh, heart of the Shamron there, and you see uh, you know Herzog having having laid, uh, having inaugurated it there. Um, so you read these words, the the growth that's happened over there is far, far, far greater than, than the destruction was. Um, so it's good to have a few practical living examples, and I was lucky to uh, experience experience that last week. Um, so uh, still, so we have to have faith that the schulban that's happening now is a uh, is is for l'tzorich binyan. Um, but the pain and the and the pull and the drag of this process. That's very very hard, as we all know, as we all know, and we and you know we're a step away from. From from families with hostages and it's low human. So we should um, I think part of the Khurban is, is also feeling the Khurban and then being mitpalel from that point. Um, I mean, we, I shared this with someone the other day when we were learning Olat Riyah together. The Rakut Parish on Tefillah. He said that you, you you have to feel your you have to, you, you have to you have to in a in, within a parameter you have to feel the pain and feel the pain of the world and feel the struggle and 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 the koshi before you then daven, right? So before you do the Amidah, you, you should take a moment to feel the Koshi, or before you say each of the Brachot in the Amidah, think about, you know, things aren't right, like the things aren't good, there is pain, there is destruction, there is imperfection, feel it for a moment, so that you know what your Tefillah will fall upon um, and overcome. And uh, there was a beautiful image that Rav Kut gave, I think it was called it Shol, when I looked up the translation, that little bit in the sea, there's like those, those little land pieces that little pop out. They're not islands, but they're like these little mini islands called shoals that uh, just get in the way of the waves by the shore. And then uh, you so you, you you need to like feel that shoal, feel that like little breakthrough, um, which is which is like the pain and, and 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 the trouble that's in the world. And then take a deep breath and see the wave overcome it, and that good feel like it like overcomes it and it's mashlim and. Uh, um it, it, it completes and heals and repairs so we feel that khurban we dive in for that it's that it's new that it's deep and then it's characteristic um and then that the orchestra will be will burst forth um i really want to do chapter 10 uh, because it really resonates with what i was feeling let's see we've got nine minutes um, uh, one second. Um, and okay. Um, is like trying to give us an understanding of. He's now ending off Orot HaMilchama, which I hope we understood at least 40% of it. <laughs> um, and he, uh, in ending it off, he's trying to give us like a, to say like, why is this, you know, why is it still happening and why will it still happen in a sense? Like, he doesn't bring it to resolution, but he brings sort of the understanding to resolution. Um, so we see how it says, uh, in, the, in the becoming a great sort of creation of the world, in the, um, in the appearance of the globe, in the manifestation of the shan and the globe, in, in its its in its absolute heart and in its loftiness, I can't hold on to all the parts. I think I don't know how exactly to translate that. All these like um, 
all these foreign things that are coming on the outside. The Vasayis Ezim Mossad had to check Riglai or Israel. The Vatzer Ezo Hara Mistit Mechona Mechona Emunit. Hashem Tuchal Amod Chutz Mimitziyot Haruma Kvoda Veshivati Kara Kadosh Kadosha. Um, so he's talking about like yeah, just I don't know in very in very eloquent uh, words, which I don't fully I can't fully translate every single one of them. Um, but there's this sort of like beauty and power of the preciousness of, of the holiness of Amishal. Kia Orelion, the Ziv Hayachid Hamuchad, she's to Elion or Emet Vigato, Chaibo. So this um, supreme light, um, unique and united and unifying which its foundation and this is going to be the key part of the foundation is in the supreme and upper realms or um, has got this true light in, in it's being chosen it lives within it it's connected to um the the, the treasured nature of israel the special nation of israel like we say um Hashem is its uh, is is this nation's God, who truat melech bo, and the sound the the yeah the sound of the king is within it. So it's within our essence and within our expression. Um, this this nature of godliness um, and uniqueness of, of Hashem. That's who we are as a nation. And now the sort of explanation part from the um, uh, descending of the world. And the low and the, and the making lowly of the neshama of the Jewish neshama, if Rad Hayichud Elyon Mimikor Achtuto. So in 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 reality, Am Yisrael comes down and the Jewish nation you know, form, and there's this brutal sort of like separation that happens between its essence and its manifestation in the world, because in this world, you can't you can't you can't have the perfection of heaven in the sort of like the imperfection of earth, um, and with Am Yisrael. Amishal loses as part of its essence because a part of its essence can't live here. It has to it, it stays in its in its source. Easy stuff to understand, right? Okay. But in the in the in the world of, of life, practical life, lo um, zarurit So in this world of life of practicality and life, um, you won't find appear you won't find you only find appearing these like little sparks of you know like glimpses of of, of shining light of this uh of the unification of the world below Hanishav, which which draws out and that draws out from these well springs the yad zarim bonogat the fact that this is all happening like in in the world that's come down um and we're drawing from these from these well springs is all good but it's happening in this world and therefore you have the hand of foreign nations touching it, so it becomes, it becomes um, sort of impurified. Um, so it's it's uh, it's and then Knesset Yisrael calls out in like pain. Oinali, like woe is to me. Kai my soul is is tired. But it's like how how appropriate are these words today? You go to bed and you're like, Iran's going to attack, and America's coming in, and America does doesn't support us, and it's brutally against us, and now they are ironclad against the attack of Iran. But like, who do you think attacked us? How did Hamas attack us? Obviously through Iran. Like all these weird, you know, it's tiring. It's tiring to know who we are, to know what the truth is, and then see the world driving us crazy because of the confusion around it. Uh, the secrets of Torah have been given over to external people. The Torah is burnt. Its uh, scrolls are, are burnt and its letters are flying. Right? So we know that that's from the stories of um, of the martyrs. Right? When, when the Torah is burnt, I think the of Chalani bin Tradion, but the the when, when you know the Torah, the Torah is lofty, so it's in this world, it comes down into this world, but um, but uh, but when there's there's ugliness and brutality and murder and abuse, the the Torah becomes burned and its its uh, letters move back to their source, right? So it's the same thing that's happened with us in a way. 
I'll try to shout out Ashkina. So, so all these like pains, I'm just skipping a bit on the the, 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 the the pain and trouble of the world, the pain and trouble of Israel, the pain and trouble of Hashem's presence, the pain of the Torah. Right, we just, we benait Zion. Um, proud Zionist. We are dim hey, we're not carrying it. Only can serve him, Koro, but told that, but told it And we understand and acknowledge the depth of the, um, of the pain. Just one. Um, and they know that in the depth of their of their pain, when Korova told the Tav Yodim Hem Shikolat Tzarot Mamach Hashchem, all these pains and these um, and this darkness, Kol Narei Nachal Adamim Nishvachim, all the rivers of um, and streams of spilt blood, Kol Aklaot Vanadudim, all these troubles and the wanderings and the and the, and the travails and the pogroms, Kol Aboz Va 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 Mistema, all the waste and the destruction, Kol Arishah Va Zohama, all the evil and the pollution. Enam Ella, Tolda Klusha, Mehad Kol Shelato Hatzar Ha'Elyon. These are all just offsprings from the echo of the voice of the supreme pain, out of this like lofty pain, Tzar Hashemayim, the pain of heaven, the pain of Hashem's presence. Tzar Eidiyalu Tamutit Mahafrada Im Kor Tamuga, the pain of um, the essential perfection and uh, an ideal being separated from the source of its um, of its joy and the um, and the pains of the heart and the supreme ideal in the spirit of the of uh, of the creations and in the choice of of man it's all connected to that like can this lofty truth be manifest? It all depends on our choices and on the on the on the teshuvah of Israel of Am Yisrael and the Jews doing their right thing and living according to the way they need to live and being true to their essence, uh, which is lofty and uh, and and serious spirituality. It's bound up. The korim the and and this pain, right? The tsara shemaim, tsara shchina, tsara diyalut, right? Kol narei nachalei adam emun shpechim, all the spilt blood. For him, Korim the Chuva, and they're calling. I would say for two things: they were calling one for an answer. It's like the pain and the and the gap is calling for an answer. Like we 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 need an answer. We we need to know how this is going to be resolved. We need an answer right now. We need an answer six months ago. But Anulia, but and we are to Hashem. This is like from the from the Mishnah when um, when when they were turned to face Yerushalayim, the, the people of the elders. The elders they would say um we are to hashem and our eyes are to hashem that in our essence we are connected to hashem and in our practice and in our yearnings and aspirations we are towards hashem so rav cook if i understand this a little bit is saying that like where do all these wars come from where do all these struggles come from so it comes from this very very primal original disconnect that happens with the creation of the world the fact that am israel is completely bound up in its essence with Hashem and with goodness and with loftiness and with truth but then comes down into the world and that process inherently has this aspect of separation that's the separation that's the pain and then every war that we feel now and every pain and every loss is a manifestation of that initial break that happens between the essence of Israel and, and the essence of Hashem in being manifest in this world so from our side, we need to do whatever we can to restore that within our within our essence, um, to try to close that gap from wherever we can, and then hope that these processes happen at the same time of the shaking of uh, and the uprooting of all these tarbuyot around us, these cultures around us, that um, that they can start closing the gap from their perspective in how they manifest their 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 goodness and their godliness. But that involves a lot of scrubbing and shaping and taking off their dirty, soiled clothes and renewing their essence and having to learn how to suckle again from a place of truth and not from uh, and not from the the disgusting food of falsehood 
that they've been uh, that they've been nourishing themselves from until now. Oh, so we've got a lot of work to do, but um, I appreciate it today. Harav Cook gave us some words for for how we're feeling. I wanted to show you if we if we learn next week, we'll see how we're doing with Pesach prep. I bought this book. It's called Hayom Hashmini by Micha Goodman. Um, it's like a—I I don't know—I don't think it's a Torani book. It's like a philosophy book. He's like a Micha Goodman is a thinker. I think he's in the Hartman Institute, uh, um, uh, the Shalem Institute, or whatever it is. Um, and he's writing about like what happens on the on the on the seventh of October. That that suddenly Israel's not Israel. Like there's there's foreign people. Like for for a moment. The borders of Israel weren't the borders of Israel, and and Galut was in Gula, like there was we were in Galut when we didn't have control over our own country and know what was going on. We were in Galut for those few hours, um, and he quotes from a, I don't know if it's a Shai Agnon or something, and he brings the same thing of these um, of a of a Torah scroll being burnt and 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 seeing this and and the person picks up this piece of Torah scroll that's burnt and it says Eretz Nochria. He says these two words talk about all a foreign land, and he said for these you know 24 hours of October 7, Eretz Israel itself was an Eretz Nochria, and like the depth of the pain and the fear and uh, um, what we all went through. So we need to feel the pain so we can close it, so we can drive to do whatever good and pour in whatever light we can, and uh, we daven that Hashem miraculously restores the light from above because we need it. I find that she Okay. Let's do some to healing with Kavana. It's a bit of a long one, but uh, we'll just read it. We don't, won't do it side by side, but I think you said talk about your shave set early on, like that, like in the like you sit in the midst of uh, of Hashem's supremeness. That's like what's going on here. We have to try to restore that. But on the way, there's all these traps and mind difficult things. So we have to believe in one of and then Orichim must be able to that uh, through the length of days, time will pass and and you know we'll be satiated, satiated and understand things and be able to eat from the right things like we saw in Rakuk. But we should and we'll see we'll be able to see and witness Hashem Yeshua. Okay, Okay. <laughs>
Okay. Thanks, everybody. Right. Hope that was slightly more inspiring than it was depressing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, both are important emotions. Okay, please, God, we should have the sort of what in miraculous ways. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.